Welcome to Electro Online. So far, we've tackled the problem with finding out how a ray crosses the first boundary, and we found the refracting equation to describe that. Then we found the transfer equation, which describes how the ray travels across the, the thick lens. Now we're going to come up with an equation that describes what happens when it crosses the back boundary or the second boundary of the lens. Now notice it's going to be relative to these two angles which are relative to the horizontal line here, which is parallel to the optical axis. Here we have the incident angle relative to the horizontal line. We'll call that alpha I2. It's incident to the boundary, but it's boundary number two, so we call it I2. Now if we look carefully, alpha I2 is actually equal to alpha T1 because those are alternate interior angles. We say that alpha I2 equals alpha T1. The transmitted angle of the first boundary equals the incident angle of the second boundary, and that's important to note. Now what we're going to do to come up with the refracting equation of the second boundary is we're going to use this as a template, but just change it according to the numbers and the letters that we need to use for the second boundary. So first of all, we want to know what happens on the other side of the boundary. We want to know the angle which is alpha T2, and we want to know the index of refraction on the other side. So we're going to call that NT2, that's the index of refraction on the other side of the boundary. So this equation on the front side will now become the equation on the second side with the appropriate substitutions. So we're going to have NT2 instead of NT1, the index of refraction on the other side of the boundary times the angle of the transmitter ray. Notice the ray goes in this direction, that will be the angle. So we write this times alpha T2 equals the index of refraction of the incident ray, which is the index of refraction inside the lens. This is N, that would be I2 because it's relative to the second boundary, times the angle of the approach ray, the incident ray, that would be alpha I2 minus, and that would be the power of the refracting surface of the backside of the lens, minus what we would call D2, we'll define in just a moment, but it'll be the index of refraction on the other side, the transmitted side, so that would be NT2 minus the index of refraction of where we came from, that would be NI2, that would be inside the lens, that would be outside the lens, divided by the radius of curvature of this side of the lens, which would be called R2, and then we multiply that times the height above the optical axis, or it could be below the optical axis, of the point of exit relative to the optical axis, that would be Y2. And this can then be described as being the refracting equation of the back side of the lens. And that would be for boundary 2. Now notice that D2, which now can be considered the power of the refracting surface on the back side of the lens, and it typically will not be the same as what is in front side of the lens. It depends on, of course, the radius of curvature and the ratio of the index of refractions. Um, but that would then be, D2 can be defined as being NT2 minus NI2 divided by R2. And that's known as the power of the refracting surface on the back side of the lens. Refracting surface number two. There we go. And so now we have all three equations. We have the first equation right here, describing what happens across the first boundary. We have the second equation, the transfer equation, that describes what happens when the ray goes through the lens, and then we have the third equation, another refracting equation, to describe what happens when it crosses boundary number two. Those are the three equations necessary each time we go through a lens. If it's a single lens, we need the three equations. If we have two or three or four lenses, one after the other, we need to do that for each lens as the ray goes through the lenses and through a lens system. Obviously, you can see that looks like a whole lot of work, and yes, indeed, it would be if we did it like this. However, there's a method that we can use called the matrix method that makes all of this a whole lot easier if you can somehow represent all this 
into a matrix format and that's what we intend to do then it actually makes it relatively easy especially with computers to calculate the rays traveling through multiple lens systems or multiple lenses which make lens systems all each one of them being a thick lens so stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that